How's it going everyone? And we are wrapping up our first day at med school. It is currently late in the evening and uh, it's nine o'clock and I can't really show you anything from being on campus or inside of the buildings because there's a lot of patient privacy that we have to respect. But I can talk about generally like what's going on and how I'm feeling and what it's like. And uh, you know, first three hours in the morning started at nine, pretty chill. And it's really just orientation right now. So it's not like you're gonna hit the ground and you're gonna be slammed with a bunch of exams and all this other stuff. Like that's next week. So this is kind of like the orientation week for school. And they're just trying to ease you into it, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and so basically three hours of getting to know what the next four years are gonna look like uh, and getting to know all the different departments and the people in those departments. And uh, you know, it's just a lot of kind of icebreaker activities and it was all virtual and honestly a lot of it kind of seemed scripted which made it a little bit boring uh, and um, so that was not really that interesting or exciting but um, the second half of the day we did go on to the campus and we masked up and there's a vaccine requirement now for COVID so everyone um, was vaccinated and um, you know we're still wearing masks inside and we're just being really careful to sterilize everything and uh, that was cool because we actually got to be inside of the centers where we're going to be doing anatomy and we got to, I got to talk with the anatomy teachers and get to know what we're going to be doing and uh, that kind of stuff. And it was really cool to just kind of get to talk to these people in person and it's way different than a Zoom call. Um, and fortunately, you know, in 2021, looks like we're going to be able to do more stuff than we were doing a year before uh, in medical school. So, um, yeah, anatomy, talk to got to pick the brain of the teachers. Um, what I learned that I thought was pretty cool is a lot of the medical students have had no experience with any dissecting at all. And I have had experience dissecting cats and some other animals in the zoology class that I took at a junior college. Um, and so it was pretty interesting and a little surprising to me to know that like I for some reason just thought like every kid in medical school is that physiology major, you know, they just know everything about the human body and they, they can like tell you like that because they've, you know, shadowed surgeons and they know everything. And it's like, the answer is no. A lot of these kids, it's their first time uh, doing any of this stuff. So everyone's new to it. And, um, you know, I will say that the zoology dissections that I did with a cat, uh, I, I was talking to them about, you know, what's the difference between like a cat and a human because we're both uh, in the same, you know, animal kingdom. And, um, you know, just because these human bodies are way bigger, the, the muscles are way more difficult to tear um, and they're treated differently after they've passed away. So there's a lot of confounding variables here. So, um, you know, in terms of, and, and this brings up an interesting discussion that people are having as to like, do you still need to have real cadavers in medical schools? Like should kids still be dissecting uh, dead people and that have been preserved in formaldehyde? And what the anatomy teacher was saying to me that I thought was really interesting was that you learn a lot by doing these dissections because you see the variety that exists in people. In a population, we're all different. We're different heights and races and genders and sexual orientations. And there's a multitude of factors that contribute to diversity in humans. And so thinking that, you know, in your perfect 3D model of what a heart should look like or where the kidneys should be located or you know, what the bone should look like, or, you know, all these things, it's not accurate to say, this is the perfect idealistic thing. And so what they were saying, and I'm, what I really believe and what I'm grateful for uh, being told is that, you know, in these anatomy classes, the real ones where you're dissecting real cadavers and you have a big class size and we're gonna have about 30 bodies to be working with, um, is that you will see enormous variety in the age of these people, in the genders, in the race, and so you're going to get a feel for what the physiological differences are between patients in the real world. And I think that's something that's really important to understand. And the worries or fears that I had of things, quote unquote, getting mangled, like if you've had a very uh, inexperienced team dissect a specimen and mangle it to the point at which you can't even recognize it as a kidney anymore, for instance, or a heart, um, that's something that uh, I think... Um, you know, it, it's from what I've been told, it's not as big of a problem as it is because you're being guided by professors who know exactly what these things should look like because they've seen so many of them and they'll tell you like what's a good example and what's a bad example. And at the end of the day, the whole purpose of anatomy 
is to be teaching you how to recognize these patterns and these features because there's not a clear cut. This is what a kidney looks like. It's going to be a bunch of different shapes and sizes and locations. And so it's really cool to get to hear this from real people uh, at medical school and to uh, be meeting my peers as well and getting to talk to the people who are going to be my classmates for the next four years. And so in that regard, it was the second half of the day was excellent. Um, and so that was very, very great to finally just kind of literally get to see the campus, to be on campus, to be around the teachers and the professors and the, uh, the students and the TAs and to just, you know, literally just talk to these people and put yourself out there. And I think, you know, the, the best advice I can give to anybody who's about to do this is to just really push yourself hard to network and to introduce yourself and to just be yourself and to be honest and to tell people that, you know, you're curious to learn more about what they're doing and be honest when you don't understand everything that they're saying. And a lot of these people are really, really great people who will take the time to stop and explain something. And, um, you know, for me getting a chance to just talk with one of the anatomy teachers a lot really cleared my mind and helped me understand what do I need to have to be prepared to do this and also what the course structure is going to look like. Cause we do this thing at Western university called blocking where basically we have a bunch of classes that are related in lumps. So it's not just like you take anatomy and you take this other course, you know, and then you take biochemistry and then you take, uh, you know, some other thing. It's like, you're going to take bits and pieces of it. And so you're going to focus on a part of the human body for a little bit. And all that's going to be in that block. And you move on to another block. So you're doing anatomy that's relevant to the material you're actually learning about at the same time. So it's tying in and reinforcing a lot of stuff that you're learning, which I think is pretty cool. And so, um, yeah, that was excellent. And I'm really glad that uh, I had a chance to do that. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, there are people in our class who are um, the students who weren't able to pass it the first year. Um, and so they're retaking it. And honestly, given COVID and how dramatically that changed everything, I can't really say I'm blaming anyone. Um, and so it's like, it's a really tough, uh, you know, if you fail one block, you have to retake the whole year. And so it's, uh, you know, definitely a little bit of a wake-up call to know that you do have to stay on top of things. You do have to make sure you understand the material. And as they've said many times to us in our orientation, what's worked for you in the past as an undergrad or a master's student or whatever um, might very well not work in medical school. And so you have to be someone who's ready to adapt and try something different if your current study habits aren't working the way that they used to work. Um, and it's going to be a lot different. It's going to be more intense and you're going to be working on teams of people who really want to just help you through this. And so in that regard, I think it is a very good experience to go through just to kind of like rewire your brain to think in different ways from what you've done in the past. So um, I think it's very interesting stuff. I'm glad that I had the opportunity to do all this stuff. Um, and I was also hearing from other students, you know, what is the general sentiment you have on your quote unquote first day of school? And a lot of people are like nervous or excited or anxious or scared. It's kind of the main words that came up during the orientation uh, and from what people were saying. And so, um, you know, I think basically you just take it a day at a time and honestly know that these are all people and they want to support you and they know it's hard and they've been through it too. A lot of these professors who have that same degree that you have, have gone through this before and they know what it takes and they know it's challenging and they are here to support you. And that's why, you work so hard to get into medical school and why you pay so much money and pay so much time to do this is that you're getting all these resources behind you to help you through it. And uh, the analogy or metaphor that they were uh, alluding to or using in, in the orientation is that we're basically all seeds and the species of seed is different. You know, you might be an oak tree, another person might be a redwood tree uh, and you know, another person might be a sunflower. And that's not the point. The whole point of medical school is to not force everyone to be a redwood tree. It's, not, uh, it's to help people grow and create that framework in the soil. And the soil is that first two years of, you know, how is the body supposed to work and then how does the body not work? And then from there, you get a nice soil that you can begin to lay your roots in to have that foundation. And then in years three and four, when you do those rotations uh, and you actually get the real world experience of what it's like in a clinic, is where you're beginning to get the sun and the water to help you grow those leaves to move out. And I think it was a very good metaphor to use for incoming medical students. And so, you know, a lot of great stuff day one. I've written notes. I'm trying to remember all the stuff that, uh, you know, we, we learned today. I think it's excellent. And, um, 
yeah, I, uh, in terms of first day, I think it was pretty cool. Uh, happy to answer anyone's questions if you have any. I hope these videos are helpful. Um, and, you know, the other thing I'll say here is, like, I am definitely not a traditional student in the sense that I was not a biology major or a chemistry major. Um, I'm an engineering major. I did engineering. I worked as an engineer. I worked as a software developer for a while. So it's basically like, um, you know, you're, this is, you know, someone with a slightly different perspective or a very different perspective in terms of, uh, you know, what is the learning going to look like? And so, um, you know, your fellow students, they're all like really great people. And I think it's really important to just remind yourself that, you know, you were chosen for a reason and they've made this kudos too. It's like, you are all here for a reason because you made it through that application process and it was a lot. Getting that undergraduate degree, getting those required undergraduate courses, taking that MCAT, applying, interviewing, you know, make sure you had the money to pay all those fees and be where you needed to be when it needed to be or when, you know, it needed, you need to be there. There was so many logistics that went into getting you where you are now and you're not there by mistake and they want you there and they want you to succeed. And I think that's the important thing to take home from the first day is that, you know, it's really just a, you know, we're getting to, it's a very supportive environment. It's going to be a lot of work. You're going to be challenged. And you're going to be pushed to take in that enormous amount of material and to really build that framework that you're going to become a physician with. And so, um, you know, just stuff like that, you know, not it's, it's, and, and there was one, um, professor who, or doctor who was speaking, who I very much liked. And he was talking about how, um, you know, hard is good. Hard means you have to work for it. And so the, the good stuff in life isn't, it doesn't come easy. And so, you know, becoming a physician is one of those things of it's going to take an enormous amount of work and enormous amount of sacrifice to become one. And, so it's something that is definitely difficult, but at the end of the day, it's a very rewarding profession. And, you know, a lot of the people you speak to, they don't regret any of their decisions. And, you know, despite the enormous costs and risks associated with putting yourself through this program, you know, hopefully in the process of just applying to medical school or to through the clinical experience you do prior to you know, applying, um, it's something where you'll begin to realize like if this is what you really want to do so um, I'm gonna wrap this video up here and I can keep you guys posted with how things are evolving as we move through to week end of week one and you know rest of this week and end of week two which apparently is gonna be when we really start taking these classes and it's gonna be a lot of zoom meetings um, the the lectures are basically mostly zoom which is very boring and canned um, and you know, it's, it's so much more engaging to be in person, to hear these people and to hear and to be with your classmates and to just talk to people and to know that you're not alone and, you know, getting yourself through this thing is something that is extremely important that I think it, Zoom will never be able to capture. You'll never be able to capture it in the computer, but it's, you know, it's really helping uh, these in-person experiences just kind of get a feel for what is life going to be like. And I really appreciate it. So, um, yeah, I've probably been talking for too long, but um, yeah, so far, how do I personally feel about all this is I feel, <laughs> that's a great question. I feel, I would say calm, but also knowing that it's like a storm is about to come and there's not really anything you can do about it other than just take it a day at a time and to try to enjoy life and to do stuff you enjoy doing. And so like my roommate and I, um, we just went to the grocery store and we picked up, I bought like over 80 bucks of groceries at Smart and Final, which is a very discount grocery store, uh, good brand names. And uh, so it was good. We, I think, you know, having a roommate and someone who's like the same year doing the same thing you were doing is really, really helpful and really, really great. And I also live right next to the campus. So pay the extra bucks each month to do that and have a good roommate is totally worth the time and effort and money you put into it, in my opinion. Um, and then, yeah, we went on a little bike ride around Pomona and got to see, you know, basically in LA, the farther up north and, uh, east you go towards those mountains, the better the weather gets, the better there's like more trees and more shade and everything's cooler, uh, literally. And, um, yeah, it was pretty cool. So that's day one of medical school. Hope this video is interesting and helpful for anyone out there. And, uh, thank you all for watching. Let me know if any questions. I'll talk to you all next time.